Welcome to the review of ISDT BC8S. ISDT, best known for their line of high quality, innovative LiPo chargers and recently a power supply, this time comes up with another battery related product. It is a battery checker designed to be used with maximum 8S batteries, hence the name. Inside the box we find the battery checker itself and also a user manual. For some reason uh, this manual is not as detailed as the one available to download from Banggood website. The link to the manual can be found in the description below. In this review I will walk you through available options and show how to set it up and make the tester work. I will also compare the product to the traditional LiPo tester we are all familiar with and most likely have at least a couple of them lying around. I'm talking about something like that. Hopefully by the end of this review it should be clear if it's worth spending $20 on a battery checker. Oh yeah, this one is not a bargain, especially compared to this little bugger that can be had for about $3 on Banggood website. Without further ado, let's see what ISDT engineers have come up with this time. Let's start with a quick look at the size and the specification. First the weight, weighs just over 13 grams, which is less than advertised on Banggood website, that's, that's a good sign, it's always good to save weight. And the dimensions, just under 34. Now we have boring part out of the way, so let's plug it into the battery and see what it looks like. Connecting a battery is rather straightforward. A battery balance connector needs to be plugged in with the negative end on the pin marked with the minus sign on top here. There we go. As with other testers, plugging in differently won't damage anything. The tester simply won't work. There you go. When the battery is plugged in, we have access to three lovely screens. Each of them displays slightly different information. To change between the screens, we press the bottom button. First screen shows voltage of each cell. The second screen shows remaining charge percentage, average cell voltage, lowest cell voltage and also total voltage. The third screen has a bar split in the middle for each cell which shows current voltage and also lowest recorded voltage of each cell. I'm not sure if you can see that but they kind of split in the middle. If flying with the tester plugged in this can help quickly identify if there is an abnormal voltage drop on any of the cells, which could be useful under some circumstances, I guess. Let me show you what it looks like in the outdoor footage. So this is the third screen I was talking about, which shows you the current voltage and the lowest voltage of each cell. One thing to note, the tester always starts on the screen that was last active when unplugging the battery. So for example, if I go here, unplug, plug in, we we'll always start here. These four icons on the right hand side of the screen show which alarms are currently active. So first one is over voltage, under voltage, unbalance and location alarm. Off to the settings now. To access the settings menu, we have to press and hold the top button. To change between the available options, we press the bottom button. The first option allows us to change the battery type or body type. And there are following options available, which allow us to select our battery type. Changing this option affects over voltage alarm and it's required to make the battery percentage icon on the second main screen work properly. Low voltage alarm range always remains the same regardless of the chosen battery type. The second option is to change the low voltage alarm trigger. We can choose from anything between 2.5 and 3.9 volts. 
or we can keep it off. This obviously means that if a battery reaches the set voltage or one of the cells reaches the set voltage, the alarm will go off. The third option is over voltage alarm and we can set the values here depending on the battery type selected earlier or we can keep it off. For example, for high voltage LiPos, this can be set to anything between 4.37 and 4.43. For, no, for normal LiPos, as we have selected now, we go from 422 up to 428. To be honest, I'm not sure why I would ever need an over voltage alarm. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I just like imagination. When well, unless someone has a dodgy charger and needs to quickly see if their battery was not overcharge. I don't know. Um, as I mentioned already, I find this pretty much useless, so I will keep it off. Next option sets voltage unbalance alarm, which is the difference in voltage between cells. And this can be set to anything from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 or can be switched off. Uh, next option switches location alarm on and off. This is actually a very useful feature. When switched on, the tester will go off after one minute of throttle inactivity. I have tested this outside and it works as expected. Let's have a look at the footage. Double beep means that the location alarm has been activated. So every time I let go of the throttle, it double beeps, and that means that from this moment on, after one minute, the alarm should go off. Next one is one minute reminder and when switched to on it will beep every one minute. Again, I'm not sure I would ever need this option, but it's here if you need it. The following one switches off the beep sound, as you can see, on and off. After that we can change display rotation, which is that's what it does. Next we have brightness setting, which is called contrast tuning for whatever reason. Um, it doesn't change much, even though we have eight levels. As you can see, the difference is not, not very big. Next option, and that's the last one, allows us to change the language to either English or Chinese. And to save the settings, we need to press and hold the top button again. And that's it! All the, all the options explained. In case anyone's interested, let's have a look what's inside. Ta-da! Now let's see how ISDT compares to a roughly 7 times cheaper ordinary LiPo tester we are all familiar with. And I'm, as mentioned earlier, I'm talking about this guy. Let's start with a quick real life outdoor test. Louder. We can still see the light flashing, but the alarm, yeah, I can still hear it. Okay, and now the thing is gone. Let's see how far I can go. Now 
Now let's compare the size and the weight. This one is 8.5. Now let's compare both displays here. So as we can see the ordinary LiPo tester just cycles through all cells and total voltage. Now let's compare voltage readings of both testers with my multimeter. So this is ISDT. It shows 415, first cell, 416, 417, 418 and the total volt voltage 16.6. 16.6, 416, 415, 419, 418, 16.7, the first cell, 417, the second, 417, third, 419. So as you can see, there are some differences here, but I think they are all within the specification of our devices. Also bear in mind that voltage fluctuates a little bit so when we plug in a different tester or use the multimeter the voltage might have changed slightly. So we have it both testers compared. The ISDT checker wins hands down in terms of available information and the clear way it's presented with very quick and easy access to all the data. The display is obviously better as the cheap tester doesn't have a proper one ISDT also has a visual alarm, flashing red light. Plus, it comes with all extra features with the location alarm and the minimum cell voltage information being the most useful in my opinion. The ordinary tester, on the other hand, is smaller, lighter, cheaper and louder. Plain and simple. It's actually so loud that I could still hear the alarm but couldn't see the quadcopter properly anymore. You may say this is an overkill for line of sight flying, but for me, the louder the better when it comes to alarms. Time for the final word. As with other ISDT products, the BC8S is a very unique offering that is pleasure to use and has a few features not available on similar products. Some of them are more useful than others. I bet everyone who flies FPV uses OSDs to check the battery voltage, rather than alarms. And most of us have their aircrafts equipped with buzzers or lost alarms anyway. We all try to keep the weight of our builds as low as possible, so it may not be ideal to add extra 13 grams to them. Even though this checker is quite light, it all adds up. It would be nice if the beeper was a little bit louder, or even better, have different volume settings. But I guess this would make the product much larger, which defies the point really. All in all, I think this is a solid product. Even if you find the features it offers not very useful to you, it's really nice to use it as a simple tester and have all the information regarding your battery easily accessible on a proper screen. One problem, however, is the price of this product, which is nothing new with ISDT. It's currently available for $20, full listed price is $25, so it's certainly not a bargain. I guess this is such a unique offering that ISDT can charge as much as they want, as there is no competition really. There are similar testers, such as this GT Power available from Banggood for $10, but they are much heavier and much bigger, so you wouldn't put them on an aircraft. It's all personal preference, and I cannot answer whether the features offered by this tester justify the price for you as a potential customer. However, I do hope that this review is detailed enough to help you decide whether this is something you need and worth spending money on. If we put the price aside, this battery checker definitely comes highly recommended from me. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to post in the comment section below or visit RC Group's forums. Thank you for watching.